I had come out, sat down, and realized how chilly it was. It's great to have a chilly morning, but I had to go get my jacket. <laughs> well, blessings to you. It is November 17th, 2022. This is the day that the Lord hath made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. You're tuning in to Matt and Randy in the morning. We are here to encourage you in the Word so that you can be strong in the faith and live victoriously in Christ. We serve such an awesome, wonderful Lord, and the fact that you're listening to this devotion is proof that His Holy Spirit is drawing you closer and closer to Him. Um, we said it before, as we do these morning devotions, uh, we're all in this together. God is drawing us together to Him to, to remind us of His love for us. You know, we were talking about the joy Jesus offers you and the different things that Jesus offers us. This world offers us a lot of pretend things. God offers us the true thing. And yesterday we talked a little bit about the parable of the two sons. This, it was out of, let's see here, where was I reading? Matthew 21. And verse 28, where it says, But what do you think? A man had two sons, and he came to the first and said, Son, go, work today in my vineyard. And he answered and said, I will not. But afterwards he regretted it and went. Then he came to the second son and said, Likewise. And he answered and said, Oh, I go, sir. But he did not go. Which of the two did the will of the father? Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, as we get into your word, I ask, Lord, that you just teach us. Holy Spirit, teach us to walk in the ways of righteousness. Help us to understand the love, the mercy, the grace that you offer each one of us, Lord. And may we offer that to others in our lives, people that you bring into our paths. Thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. He is the one that can do the ch does the changes in our lives. It's by the Holy Spirit. That we can walk. I had written down this follow from the heart not the mouth. So if I had to title this it would be that follow from the heart and not the mouth because you see that first son that said no I will not regretted what he said and repented and went and did what the father had asked of him. Now the second one, with his mouth, says, Oh, I will do it. But he never did. So, follow from your heart, not the mouth. What did the first from his mouth, but his heart said different. What the first said from his mouth, his heart said different, and he repented. And did what the Father had asked. Peter denied Jesus. But in his heart, he knew that that was not right. And he ended up dying, crucified upside down is what history says, because of serving Christ. So your mouth may say something for a moment, but what does your heart say? Follow your heart as it leads you to the Lord. Follow the Holy Spirit's leading. You know, David said, in Psalms 51, create in me a clean heart, O Lord. You know, in other parts of the Bible it says, you know, don't let your heart deceive you. Follow Jesus. Let your heart be led by the Lord. J.C. Riles says this. I want to read this quote. There is nothing hidden from the Lord's eyes. There are no secrets with him. Alone or in company, by night or by day, in private or in public, he is acquainted with all our ways. Who saw Nathaniel under the fig tree is unchanged. Go where we will and retire from the world as we may. We never are out of sight of Christ. This is a thought that ought to exercise a restraining and sanctifying effect on our souls. You know, the fact that God sees everything. He is with us wherever we go. Should help you live a life that honors God. He said, uh, To exercise a restraining and sanctifying effect on our souls, we all know the influence which the presence of the rulers of this world has upon their subjects. 
Nature itself teaches us to put a check on our tongues and demeanor and behavior when we are under the eye of a king. You know, when people are under, like if you're at a workplace, if the big boss comes in, everybody straightens out. Be careful, be careful. he's coming in, he's coming in. Everybody straightens out. How much more should we, in the presence of God Almighty, straighten our lives out and live in a way that honors Him? The sense of our Lord Jesus Christ's perfect knowledge of all our ways ought to have the same effect upon our hearts. Let us do nothing we would not like Christ to see and say nothing we would not like Christ to hear. Let us seek to live and move and have our being under a continual recollection of Christ's presence. How different we would be if we constantly would remember the Holy Spirit is in us. Christ in us, the hope of glory. He's always with us. He hears what we say, what we do. Now, he's a merciful God. And if we say something we shouldn't, then we catch ourselves. We can say, Lord, I'm sorry. That wasn't right. And he forgives us because he understands that we are in a world full of sin. There's all kinds of pressures coming our way. But if we repent and come back, regret what we said, he forgives us just like the first son in our story who at first said no, but then did what the father had asked. Just as Peter denied Christ, but then stood strong and bold for Christ. God loves you. God loves me. He loves us. He understands that there's going to be times when we mess up. And he's there to pick us back up. That's why we have the precious Holy Spirit. It says, let us seek to live and move and have our being unto continual recollection of Christ's presence. Let us behave as we would have done had we walked beside him in the company of James and John by the Sea of Galilee. This is the way to be trained for heaven. In heaven we shall ever be with the Lord. 1 Thessalonians 4, 17. Colossians 1 says, For this reason we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you and ask that you may be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding, that you may walk worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing him, being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God. Strengthen with all might according to his glorious power, not your glorious power, his glorious power gives you the strength to live a life that's pleasing to God. For all patience and long suffering with joy, giving thanks to the Father who has qualified us to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in the light. He has delivered us from the power of darkness and conveyed us into the kingdom of the Son of His love, in whom we have redemption through His blood, the forgiveness of our sins. For it pleased the Father that in Him all the fullness should dwell, and by Him to reconcile all things to Himself by Him, whether things on earth or things in heaven, having made peace through the blood of His cross, and you, who once were alienated and enemies in your mind by wicked works, yet now, how wonderful this is, he has reconciled in the body of his flesh through death to present you holy and blameless and above re reproach in his sight, if indeed you continue in the faith, grounded and steadfast, and are not moved away, from the hope of the gospel. Remain steadfast. Remain in the hope of the gospel. Keep a praise song in your heart. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. We'll see you tomorrow morning at 7 a.m.